So maybe you're looking to start a career as a freelancer. Perhaps you have an interest in photography or design, illustration, animation that you want to turn into a part-time or a full-time job, but you don't know where to start, what tools to use. Maybe you're already a creative professional and using all the usual commercial software, but you're thinking about setting off on your own and you're not sure you want to take on a big subscription before you have clients. Maybe you're just fed up with subscriptions altogether. You're tired of the big corporation squeezing as much money out of you as possible, but not really giving you the kind of return that you would expect for what you're paying. Or maybe you just want to use software that's better for the world, that makes the world a better place by being freely available to anybody for any reason. I don't know what the reason is that you're here, but I'm hoping to show you that free and open source software, as opposed to commercial software, is viable and also in a lot of ways preferable for you in your freelance journey. Before we look at how Freehide uses free and open source software and how you can too, let's get a little bit of vocabulary out of the way. When I say free software, I'm not talking strictly about software that's free of charge. I'm talking about software that's freely licensed. And what it means to be freely licensed is that the creator of that software gives you the right to use to modify and redistribute the code of that software. You can see the code and you can do things with it without having to get their permission. Sometimes I'll call it free and open source software for clarity. Free software may be made available free of charge, but what truly makes it free is that it gives its users freedom. If a developer were to lose interest in the software or some giant corporation came and bought the developers all out and told them to make the software do something different. The software, as it was created, is still available to the community of users that are using it to keep working on it or to take it in a different direction. In a sense, the software belongs to the community, not just to the people who created it, because they licensed it in that way, in a free way. Valuable tools don't die because their commercial value dies. A company can't just buy the software and then discontinue it so that you have to use their competing product or end up on some kind of subscription. Software that's made available to you free of charge, but without these other benefits, isn't really making you free, it's making you dependent at a discount. Let's get into the fun part and look at some actual projects created by Freehive using free and open source software and talk about those tools and how those tools might fit into your freelance career.
Frame 1 is the creator of a specialty controller that's used in the competitive gaming market. They came to Freehive while the product was still in early stages of development with the need for a video that would help them pre-sell it. The video you just watched was the finished result, but let's look at how this came together and what tools we used. When we start a project like this, we'll often begin with sketches in an application called Krita. Krita is backed by a nonprofit foundation that receives funding from user donations as well as corporate sponsors. It's a powerful digital painting application that is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The reason we start with Krita is that we can get ideas sketched roughly and start to show the client what we have in mind in a way that's loose and easy to change if we need to. In this case, we did sketching in Krita. We take those sketches and stitch them together into an animated storyboard in another free software application called Blender. Here you can see the Blender interface and the sketches we cut to the specific music track we had in mind. Blender does more than this. Its native capability is creating 3D renderings and animations. Once we've arrived at a concept that the client likes, we'll import the product model or create it from scratch all in Blender. If you're not familiar with Blender, this probably looks really complicated. Blender does take some time to master, but the wonderful thing about it and other free software is that you don't have to be in a hurry. You're not paying hundreds of dollars per month to use it. You can start incorporating it into your work in a basic way and learn the software as you go. Blender was the first free software application we incorporated into our own work about 11 years ago, and you'll see that it has become a staple tool of the work we do. Blender's available also, like Krita, for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So let's take a look at another project. Elementary creates the Windows and Mac OS alternative called Elementary OS. This is a web page design and set of renderings we created for them as they were looking to more deliberately promote its new partnership with a hardware vendor. But before I get into how we designed the page, I'm going to jump back in time and look at a small detail to showcase another important free software application. What you're looking at is the desktop background we created for Elementary OS within the GNU Image Manipulation Program, more commonly known as GIMP. GIMP will bear a lot of similarities to photo editing software you'll find elsewhere, with many of the same features, including layers, filters, and so forth. What you're looking at is a slightly modified photograph for the daytime background, and here, is a heavily modified version of that same photograph for the nighttime background. While the workflow may be slightly different than other programs when it comes to photo editing, there's not much you can't create with GIMP. It is community funded and user developed and available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Now, back to the web page design itself. Once again, we're looking at Krita, this time being used to wireframe the page prior to work on 3D rendering and other assets. Krita is a much more powerful tool than we're using it for here. But with fantastic drawing tablet support, it's a fun starting point for expressing ideas. With buy-in on the page concept, we started to work on the assets for the page. The first and most important for capturing attention 
and telling a story was the hero animation. Blender delivers for us again here. Starting with the CAD drawings for the actual laptop, we're able to create the material look and rig setup we need. Then we edit the screen recordings the way we want them right inside of Blender and pull it all together. In parallel to the animation and renderings, we worked on a refined page design using a free software application called Inkscape. Inkscape is a community developed free software application for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. While its original purpose was to serve as a vector drawing application, and we use it for that all the time, we also use it to lay out pages for websites and sometimes even for print. Here you can see the layout in the light and dark modes in preparation for a handoff to the web developer. This page design has not yet been built, but it serves as a great example of how a suite of free software applications can all come together to create something new and exciting. Now, let's change gears and look at something designed for print. Gate Labs is the creator of the Gate Smart Lock. As part of a broader brand revamp, Freehive was involved in the redesign of their retail packaging. Here you can see what the packaging looks like in the free software application called Scribus. Scribus is a desktop publishing tool created by volunteers and available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, like the other free software I've highlighted. If you're designing large multi-page documents or need to export a PDF for print with spot or CMYK colors, it is the best free software solution available. In this case, it was used as the gathering place for several elements created in other applications. On the front, you can see a rendering of the lock alongside a mobile phone. The rendering was done in Blender, of course, but the app interface was redesigned by Freehive using Inkscape. The side of the packaging features several icons created in Inkscape as well. See that image of the woman with her dog and the lock on the door behind her? That's actually a stock photo combined with a product rendering made in Blender. Once this project was completed, exported as a PDF and sent to the printer, it was done. No one asked what software it was created in, and no one cared. While there are perhaps scenarios where a client may require work to be done in a particular application, or they may need the source files for some reason, this has come up very rarely in our work done exclusively in free software for over five years. If the finished results are good, little else matters to clients. These projects have highlighted the creative software we use most, but there's a lot more creative software that's available and freely licensed for you to use in your freelance career. There's an application called PenPot that works great for collaborative prototyping. There's Caden Live, which is a powerful video editor. There's Darktable for raw image processing, and there are many others that are available and freely licensed. If you choose to pursue a career as a freelancer, an investment learning free software applications is an investment in your freedom. It's insurance against being caught in the crossfire between competing software companies trying to lock you into just using their product. It is protection against losing access to your own work unless you continue to pay a subscription for the rest of your life. Most importantly, it's an opportunity to join with designers, artists, photographers, and other creators banding together in communities to shape their own future.